Siam Suave. Nickname for this plant is Spokes. This is part one and in part two I'll be sharing a mnemonic or memory technique to help you commit to memory the most distinguishing characteristics of this plant for identifying purposes. Be sure to watch all of part one so that part two is understandable. This is a weedy plant, can be quite broad, three to seven feet tall. Its habitat is moist ground. It can also be found in water up to two feet deep. White flowers. What we see here is one of the compound umbels. I'll explain that in more detail later in this presentation. This picture shows us uh, how the leaflets, each leaflet, have sharp teeth around the margins or around the edges. This is a cross section of the main plant stem. It's very stout, it's hollow, and deeply ribbed. This diagram shows us a picture of one of the upper leaves. This is an entire leaf, it's a compound leaf to be more specific. It's not a simple leaf. A compound leaf has many parts. The number of leaflets are odd in number. You can tell that right away by just looking at the tip of each leaf and one being an odd number, we know that this is an odd pennant compound leaf. Pennant means feather-like. So as you can see, this resembles a feather. So as an odd pennant feather-like, compound, many parts, leaf, rather than an even pennant. Even pennant will have uh, two leaves coming out the tip. Now this re represents the inflorescence or flower cluster. The technical term for this particular form of inflorescence is compound umbel. An umbel, like an umbrella, has many stems, flowering stems, radiating from one point. We have other plants in this Survival Plants Memory course which appear to have flowering stems radiating from one point, but if you look closely they will stagger instead. They will stagger off the stem so that's the difference. That would technically not be an umbel. An umbel or umbelettes ha uh, have stems which radiate from a single point. Main umbel. At the tip of each of these stems is what is technically referred to as an umbelette, which then makes this a compound umbel. The spokes plant has 8 to 22 umbelettes. The umbelettes can be up to 1 inch across, and the stems can be 1 to 5 inches long. It's important to note. And we'll see a better picture of this later in the presentation. But there are leaf-like bracts which are found beneath each main umbel and beneath each umbelette. It's important to 
recognize or identify them both because it's poisonous look-alike the water hemlock does not have the bracts at the base of the main umbel but does have the bracts at the base of its umbelettes. This is another leaf found on the lower part of the plant, typically submerged underwater or very near the water surface, which indicates that it was previously underwater. Uh, when the leaf takes this shape, um, it's basically referred to as being segmented filament, uh, deeply lobed. Um, in the mnemonic or memory technique, I associate this look with grass. But again, it's found on the same plant, this being found on the upper part of the plant well above the water this leaf found it's basically an aquatic plant it's found in the water or very near the water surface and this is a diagram of the fruit which we'll see a color picture of later on up to three to seven feet tall. Umbelette. There are five petals. Each flower is about three millimeters across. has five stamen, two which are very small, can barely see them here. That's one, two, three you can see clearly. There are two more in here. I'll show a blown up picture, kind of blurry, but a blown up picture of the stamen in a later slide. The anthers are whitish pink. They can also be yellow. This is the blown up picture I was referring to. One, two, three, four, five anthers along with the five petals. Petals are again white. They're actually tear shaped, but they are curved at the tip, which kind of distorts the tear shape. These umbelettes are flat topped, but the umbels are dome shaped. The umbelettes are flat, but the umbel itself. bears more of a dome shape. Another picture or a color picture of the bracts. Very narrow, leaf-like. Beneath the umbelettes and 
beneath the humble. The stems of the flowering umbelettes are also grooved. Five stamen. This shows us a picture of the fruit. Now the fruit replaces the flowers. The fruit features two seeds, two chambers. We'll be seeing a better picture of the seeds or we'll be seeing a picture of the seeds in a later slide. The stem is hollow, it's stout. Again, flowering stems up to five inches long. Now, each of these umbelettes can feature 20 to 35 flowers. Close up of one of the bracts to the main umbel. Bracts to the umbel, bracts to the umbelette. Another picture of the fruit. Deeply ribbed. Starting off light green, ending up brown. Picture of the seeds inside. There are actually two seeds inside of each fruit. The seeds are also prominently ribbed like the stem of the plant. This picture shows us in what fashion the compound leaf attaches to the stem. This is in botany referred to as clasping. It clasps the stem. And in the mnemonic, this is represented by the grabbing of the bicycle. In part two, you're going to be grabbing the bicycle from off of the snow covered ground. This would represent your hand in this stem, which re would represent the bicycle frame, which is stout and hollow as well. On the underside of this compound leaf is a sheath. This sheath is uh, common and it will uh, extend the full lower length here of the leaflet. The stems 
are segmented here or they have a partition here where the leaf compound leaf stem meets the main stem in between is all hollow now these partitions or intersections cause the stem to develop a zigzag shape the leaflets are opposite of one another the leaflets are of the main leaf however the leaves alternate along the stem they are not opposite along the stem the compound leaves alternate they are medium green on the bottom or I'm sorry medium green on top and more of a pale green on bottom the bottom is also smooth the leaflet shapes do vary actually they vary from uh, an oblong lance shape to uh, it's like an oblong ovate shape which is I'll be showing you a picture of that later to and here in this example we see a leaflet which is more of a narrowly lance shaped finely tooth around the margins or edges <clears throat> now here I'll quickly try to show you a distinction between the spokes plant and its poisonous look-alike the water hemlock both have white flowers both are compound have or have compound umbels the um, as I said before the poisonous water hemlock does not have the bracts beneath the main umbel another distinction is how this plant we're studying now spokes have once pennantly compound leaf structures so it's once compound not twice compound how I like to remember this is thinking of these uh, pennant compound leaf structures in the same way that we would think of rivers, streams, and creeks. This being the main plant stalk, we have the main river coming off of this stalk. All three of these examples have the main river. What flows into rivers are streams. We have a stream flowing into this river. And what flows in the streams but creeks? We have a creek flowing into this river, or I'm sorry, we have a creek flowing into this stream, the stream flowing into the river, and the river flowing from out of the main plant stock. Now, along any river, or most rivers, on either side of this river will be vegetation. If you've got a canoe and you're traveling in your canoe down the river, you'll see trees and bushes and various plants on the right and to the left of you. So this is what I refer to as once compound, just one river. That's what we're dealing with here with the spokes plant. Now the water hemlock is twice compound. It's got two. That's the river and the stream. And its vegetation is growing along the stream.
See, when, uh, you've taken your canoe off of the main river, and you're now uh, taking um, it up into a stream, and on to the right and to the left of you on this, in this stream is a vegetation. Water hemlock is twice compound, and this three three times compound, a tri compound, is here just for future reference. In case and because there are cases in this course, we will come across three times compound leaves, and that will just uh, be the creek. You're now traveling your canoe, not on the river, not on the stream, but your, com your uh, kayak or your canoe is now on the creek. And you look to the right or to the left of you on the creek and you see the vegetation, the trees and the plants and so forth. Sharply tooth, odd pennant, compound leaf. This is a picture of the poisonous hemlock. Notice how it has, it is a uh, two times compound. Looks very much the same, except uh, the vegetation is growing along the stream here. This is a picture of the spokes plant. The sheaf that I was telling you about earlier narrowly lance shaped can be also more of an ovate shape more fat here at the bottom odd pennant opposite leaflets are of one another This is another picture of what do you think it is? Is this the leaflet of the water hemlock or of the spokes plant? It's of the poisonous plant, water hemlock. That's the stream. Put another way, the leaflets are not growing from off of the main stem, or I should say the main leaf stem. Growing on the main leaf stem is a stem with leaflets. So a stem with leaflets. is two times or by pennant. This is a leaf of spokes and it shows us how variable these leaves can be much more broad This picture actually would represent what uh, we'll see or hear in the mnemonic referred to as the bicycle seat. And this is the photograph that I have in mind when I associate a bicycle seat with one of the variable leaf shapes of this plant.
The leaflets can be up to five inches long, two inches across. Again, always in wet soil or uh, in water up to two feet deep. Is the sheaf. These leaves appear to be more of the aquatic leaves, deeply segmented, deeply lobed. Like this. Again, as I said before, these lower aquatic leaves in the mnemonic are associated with grass. Looks very grassy. This is a picture of the roots, obviously. The roots are very shallow. They're fibrous and fleshy. The edible parts of this plant are the roots the stems and the leaves. To learn how to prepare these parts for eating, visit Survival Plants Memory Course and click on Siam Suave Water Parsnips or Spokes Plant and find the section called Methods of Preparation. This has been part one and in part two I'll be sharing a mnemonic or memory technique to help you commit to memory the most distinguishing characteristics of this plant for identifying purposes. Thank you for watching.